fountain of life. A collection of live recorded sermons from His Grace Bishop Emilianos Maloa aiming to make us fountains of the Holy Spirit. Here is today's message. A young man came up to Jesus kneeling and saying, Good teacher, what good must I do to have eternal life. The Lord saw that he was trying, so he told him everything he needed to reach perfection. If you would be perfect, go sell what you possess and give them to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven and come follow me. And the young man who came up to Jesus kneeling ended up living sad because he had great possessions. So, what was he expecting to hear from Christ, who was God? Christ, who emptied himself and became human? Not a, world, not a wealthy, but human born in a stable. Christ, who did not have where to lay his head like the foxes and the birds? Christ, who was sacrificed from our own sins? The young man was kneeling in front of him, but he had no idea who Christ was. Christ was not just a good teacher. He was the extreme humility. This is why his advice would have been only according to who he was and according to his own example. As soon as the young man left, Jesus said to his disciples, It will be very hard for a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. As soon as the apostles heard this, they were greatly astonished and they asked him, Who then can be saved? But Jesus looked at them and said to them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. And Athanaitel that used to say that translating the scripts are from the ancient Greek to the modern Greek, you lose 80%. So, we will try and explain what the ancient Greek text says. If we were to translate from the ancient Greek to English the phrase, go, with God all things are possible, we would rather say, everything is possible when you are placed close to God. So according to this translation, when we are with him, the impossible becomes possible. The unachievable becomes reality. We walk on waves and experience a continuous miracle. This is the kingdom of God himself. The immediacy, the proximateness, the communion and union with God. In a similar way, the phrase, with men this is impossible, should be rather translated, it is impossible when you are close to humans. And it would again mean the immediacy, the proximateness, the communion and union with humans only. It should not be taken literally, but with the meaning of trying to please people or to behave egocentrically in a way totally attached to our fallen human nature. This is how we lose the kingdom of God. The young man did not realize who he kneeled in front of. How many times we kneel in front of God in the form of prayer and we afterwards continue our lives being sad? Do we really understand who we kneel in front of? Who we pray to? Do we understand what Christ asked from the young man and what he asks from us? In case we seek the the kingdom of heaven, of heavens, Christ asks us to become poor and to follow him. We see in the Old Testament Abraham being being rich, and yet the kingdom of heavens to also be called Abraham's bosom. This means that Abraham became a saint regardless his riches. 
So what is it that Christ is asking for? What kind of poverty will satisfy, satisfy him? He asks us to follow his example of the extreme humility. He was God and he became human for us, the unjust people. He requests that we empty ourselves and be filled up with love for him and our fellow men. How now would this be expressed in a practical and everyday way? How could I love God with all my soul and all my intellect and all my strength and my fellow men like myself? How? In my relations with God and with my fellow men, I need to forget about myself and to escape from my ego. My criterion should be how to comfort God and my fellow men and not how to defend my rights, my personal ideas, ideologies, opinions, capital, honor, name, or reputation. I should not place others within the borders I consider right and appropriate, and I should not correct my brother. Instead, I should be mindful to correct myself. I will never do something against my faith or conscience, but my criterion is the other person, full stop. My criterion is the other person and not what I consider right. The Lord said, Inasmuch as you did or didn't do good to one of the least of these my brethren, you did it to me. Who are these the least of these my brethren who we ought to benefit and not ignore? Least of these are the unjust, the ones who are full of passions, shifty, liars, the untrustworthy, the problematic, the stupid, the cranky, the evil, the untamed, the users, the rude ones. If we do not benefit these people, we did not benefit Christ himself. And even worse, in case we attempt to discipline them without have been given authority from the church, if we try to punish them, to revenge them, to humble them, we will find ourselves attached to our human nature's fallen ways and away from the kingdom of heavens. By choosing the riches of self justification we shut the door on this list of our brothers and automatically we lock ourselves, not them, outside of paradise. The paradox with this attitude, the paradox with pleasing the powerful and egotistically enforcing and promoting our will to the weaker on the list of people is that although we constantly associate with humans, we find ourselves alone and lonely. Selfish people do not have friends. And even if they do, they are not real friends. How could you ever be my friend when in every occasion and interaction I demand my will to be done, when I always talk to you about my knowledge, about what I consider right, wise, ethical, worth looking into, etc. How could you ever be my friend if I do not try to find common ground and interests with you, if I do not care for whatever you consider valuable, and in case you do something wrong, God Almighty, with all his wisdom, might not correct you, but I, with my ego egocentrical wisdom and justice, will definitely attempt to correct you. So you should be a fool to consider me your friend. And I should also be a fool if I believe that this egocentrical behavior will lead me in the kingdom of heavens. It will be useful to examine ourselves and find out how much egocentrical riches we possess and deny them all before death knocks on our doors. Otherwise, God will deny us the entry in his eternal kingdom.